Not everybody that's on the street is there because they choose to be. Uh, there's a lot of misfortune that takes place. They once had a life. Once upon a time, they had a life. And I realized that any of us could find ourselves in that position. Any of us. You, you don't want to just put them right back out on the street. You know, you want, you want to help them, you, especially if they're under some distress, right? And, and that's something we need to work on. They are, they are caring people. They are loving people. And just because they're homeless, homeless doesn't make them any different than I am or you or anyone else. And they need as much love as what we need and a much, as much understanding. It takes a hard time or a long time or whatever you want to call it to get to know these people and to get to trust them. I've been living in Harlingen since 90, 1990, and my husband and I moved away in 2008 to do missionary work, and we worked with orphanages. And um, one of the places we worked at was Bowles Children's Home, Arms of Hope, in Quinlan, Texas, about 45 minutes outside of Dallas. And the church that we attended, they were heavily involved in uh, outreach, uh, going into Dallas, uh, to take care of the homeless. I'd never worked with homeless people before. And so, briefly, let me just tell you, before I move into Impact and what gave me the passion to do this was, they had told us when we were in uh, Dallas that you don't go to them, they come to you. Because of the danger, you don't want to just leave that area. And so, I had one of our kids, he was 10 at the time, he was with me and I said, you are to stay with me. And we were approached by uh, uh, a man, probably in his 50s or 60s, and uh, he approached us. He introduced himself, and he said, I want to tell you a story. And he was actually directing it to the boy. He said, I want you to listen to me. He said, I was not always homeless. He said, um, I had a job. I was actually a professor at a university, and um, I have a family. I had a home. I had a nice life. And he said, but um, I lost my job because of some young uh, stud that uh, was replaced. I was replaced by a young stud. And because of it, uh, and because of my age, I couldn't find a job. And so I began drinking and just wallowing in self-pity. And my drinking turned into, you know, a very painful experience. He lost his family, he lost his home, he found himself on the street. And uh, I realized for that moment, that very moment, that the way we look at people on the street needs to change. As far as homeless vets are concerned, I mean, I, I, I know one is in the county, in the county uh, jail. I usually, as soon as he comes out, I start looking for him again because he avoids me. He doesn't want any, any help from me, but you know, I gotta try. I thought he was going to die Two, a couple of months ago, not a couple of months, maybe a year ago, he was in the hospital. He couldn't, he couldn't move anymore, and I thought he was going to die. I, uh, I can only say once you have a little girl that comes in, and uh, we had three bicycles last year, and we put the one bicycle out and it disappeared right off. Right, right, the first thing was gone, but no children. So I said, well, I think you better put the bicycles back. So they put the bicycles back. I said, now when the children come through, someone with a child, you talk with that child and see just what her entertainment is, et cetera, et cetera. I said, use your own ingenuity. I said, I, I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. So they interviewed, basically interviewed children as they came through. And a little girl came through, maybe uh, five years old, maybe six years old. And they asked her what she did for uh, entertainment, what her hobbies were. She said, well, not, not much. She said, uh, sometimes I draw and sometimes I do this. And uh, the, the, the lady said, well, do you ride a skateboard? No, I don't have a skateboard. As she developed uh, the conversation with a little girl, she said, honey, come back here with me. I think I have something that you may want. Took the little girl back and the little girl saw the bicycle and she said, this is for you. And the little girl said, thank you, God. She said, I've been asking for a bicycle for God for two years. And stories like that just make your heart just, I mean, just, just bloom. Put yourself in, in their shoes for one, one bit. 
You know, it's like, it's, it's not right to judge nobody unless you walked in their shoes or you know their life, their past history, because we don't know, you don't know what I've been through. I don't know what you've been through, okay? I've, I've been physically, verbally abused by aunts, uncles, father, mother, sisters, cousins, you name it, okay? They would criticize me because of my mom. It wasn't my fault. If my mother did something or another, there's a God. We're not nobody to judge. Uh, there are three reasons people become homeless, basically. Uh, one is um, um, they've had a lifetime of irresponsible behavior and they're in trouble because of it. Uh, the second is um, probably the, the largest reason people become and stay homeless is medical problems, either mental illness or substance abuse or uh, they've had a medical problem that uh, they haven't been able to um, pay their bills because of. And the third is economic, and that's a pretty large number as well. Uh, they've lost their job, their medical bills have built up or whatever it may be, they can't afford to pay their rent anymore, they've gone to live with a family member for a period of time and worn out their welcome and they come to us because of that. I left my house because I was gay, okay, and I didn't want my, my my niece or nephews to be hearing crap from people mm -hmm. okay because i'm the type that if you mess with my family i'll i'll throw you down mm -hmm. i will kick your booty before i was homeless i was i had a job where'd you work at i used my last job was as a provider i went from a cna i went to working as a direct care for the mentally challenged as a care coordinator case manager QA, and that was my last QA. I got sick and I would fall out, I would have seizures, but it's because I had a tumor in my head. So I had a craniotomy all the way around with staples. I looked beautiful. I had a silver silver crown. And at East, I stayed with a burrito right there. Mm -hmm. huh. And I'm supposed to be taking medication for my seizures, but I was allergic to two of them. And I haven't gone back. How long have you been off your medication then? Ooh, since uh, about eight or nine months, somewhere around there. I mean, unfortunately, the ones that I remember the most are the ones that died on me. You know, they, they had one particular vet that was um, about my age. And he'd been basically out in the street for you know, at least 10 years. He's out of San Benito, actually. And uh, he wasn't—he had no income whatsoever. He was—he was sleeping out in the street or somebody's backyard, wherever anybody would put him up. And and uh, the times that I dealt with him, he wouldn't—he didn't want any help. But he could barely—he could barely walk. He was dying basically. And one of the times he was hospitalized, we took advantage of it, and and he became eligible for Social Security. And with that income, we were able to get him into housing. And he lived a couple of years. And um, of course, his liver was gone. He'd been drinking all his life. So he, he passed away a couple of years ago. But at least the last three years of his life, he was living in a, in a comfortable apartment, not out in the street with all the ant bites and mosquito bites and all that. I had a friend, God rest his soul, Richard Mendes. We call him the blessed one. He used to be right there, he was sitting. When he, when he fell out, had a seizure and everything, but he passed away that same day. That same day he passed away. And he wasn't eating correctly, nah, but people would come and they would bring him food and he would, they would give it to him and he would come and give to everybody else. For them to have a place where they can go, where they are safe, where they know that they can walk into the next phase if they want to, uh, where we feel like um, they won't fall victim to crime or or be enticed into doing something themselves. I think we need something like that. We run the, the Harlingen Neighborhood Food Pantry. Um, it's been in, in existence since 2001, I believe, right? 2000. 2000. And um, 
We are currently located in Church of Christ on Harrison Street and we distribute food to the needy here in Harlingen. So once a month they can come and after they've um, applied and they bring all the, the right paperwork in, then they, they're able to come once a month to receive food. And um, we also have a program for the homeless. They can come every single Wednesday and they'll get a, they get a snack bag and um, snacks and clothing. Lost and Fishes has uh, six programs. Uh, best known are the uh, Open Arms Homeless Shelter, which is open 365 days a year. Uh, we have two wings, one for men and the other for women and children. Uh, next best known probably is our Bread of Life Dining Hall. We serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner uh, Monday through Friday and breakfast and dinner on Saturday and Sunday. No questions asked. Anybody who asks for a plate of food and as many plates of food as they ask for. If you come and get in line and ask for a plate of food, we will happily give you a plate of food. They each get a bedroll, they get a pack of hygiene stuff, they get goodies, they get socks, they get gloves, they get beanies, uh, they get everything that helps them in the winter to survive in the winter. Uh, we pass out water bottles, the plastic, not the throwaway, we pass out uh, pop top canned goods, um, gift cards. Uh, sunscreen, shoes, you name it, whatever they need, we get it done. We also have a, a department called Family Emergency Assistance uh, through which we help people pay rents and utilities and we also distribute food bags. Uh, we have a New Hope job shop. The job shop is uh, a training center for uh, getting a GED, learning Microsoft Office. Our teacher also has uh, job leads available to people. We place people in jobs and uh, worked with them on writing their resumes and, and that sort of thing. Uh, the fifth department is called uh, weatherization. We help people weatherize their homes. Uh, they have to live at or below 200% of the poverty level and they also have to be homeowners in order to qualify the program. We can do a number of measures up to uh, um, central air conditioners for people. And then uh, the last, and we're, we're celebrating five years now, as a matter of fact, of Great Physician Healthy Living. It's a program by which we partner with other uh, organizations, uh, particularly Cultural of Life Ministries, to offer medical care to, to the community. Uh, there's a clinic today, as a matter of fact. You probably noticed when you came in, they were setting up. We have doctors come in and, and see patients. We have a full-time nurse on our staff who uh, works with our clients. We see uh, we saw about, uh, well, it was 1,875 patients uh, in, in this last year through our Great Physician Healthy Living Clinic. Basically, we have a, a place where we, we invite community resources to come in, and we asked all veterans, that, homeless veterans, to come in and, and find out about the services that are available to them. We provide free haircuts and hygiene kits, and things like that. And if they're not enrolled, we get them enrolled with the VA and of course we start working with them. Our pantry is open uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And also we are open if we get emergency calls. We get emergency calls from the Harlingen Police Department uh, on people that do not have food, both on the street and at their home. And we answer those calls. And uh, last year, 19, or 2015, we distributed over 750,000 pounds of food here, in the, just in Harlingen. It makes a world of difference in your life when you know you're doing something for somebody. It makes your day so much better. But I have a passion, and my passion is, is serving others. And when I serve others, I'm serving God. And that's my story. One, two, three. De colores, de colores se visten los chotas de Harlem Jan. De colores, de colores son los caballitos que usan los chotas de Harlem Jan. De colores, de colores son los carrecitos que usan los chotas de Harlem Jan. De colores, de colores se visten los chotas de Harlingen. Tan tan. Mm,